Mercedes revealed a striking new look to their W14 car as long-awaited major upgrades were revealed on Thursday, ahead of this weekend's Monaco Grand Prix. The silver arrows have brought new side pods, alongside a revised front suspension system and a new underfloor. So in today's video, let's check out these new upgrades and analyze how these upgrades will affect the car, both mechanically and aerodynamically. Let's start our analysis with the most exciting part of this upgrade, and that is not the new side pods. For me, the most interesting part within the upgrades is this new front suspension. Now let me show you the original front suspension of the W14, the one the team ran from Bahrain up to Miami. Take a close look at the front leg of the upper wishbone highlighted by purple. The front leg is mounted to the leading edge of the front bulkhead. Keep in mind its relative position with the rear leg of the upper wishbone as well, highlighted in blue. But at Monaco, we got to see a completely different front suspension geometry. Mercedes has completely redesigned the front suspension of the W14. It is apparent with the mounting of the front leg of the upper wishbone. The front leg highlighted by purple is mounted much higher and further rearwards of the chassis than before. The pushrod, highlighted by yellow, remains much the same, but the shroud has been reshaped, aiding the aerodynamics around the entire front suspension geometry. The rear leg of the upper wishbone remains unchanged in terms of mounting position. The first thing that comes to our mind is the change of anti-dive angle. Mercedes was running 15 degrees of anti-dive with its previous suspension geometry. With the front leg of the upper wishbone mounted much higher than before and the new front suspension brought by Mercedes to Monaco, I expect that angle to increase by a significant margin. Increase in the anti-dive angle would mean the car would dive less under braking, helping the vehicle dynamics performance, resulting in the W14 having much more of a stable mechanical platform. More than the improvement in vehicle dynamics performance, this new front suspension plays more into the improvement of the car's aerodynamic performance. The change of wishbone positioning is said to improve the wishbone wake, which in turn improves onset flow into the side pod, therefore improving cooling performance. The aero performance around the front suspension is much more important than the mechanical stability I would say, because the first part air touches of a Formula 1 car is the front wing and then the front suspension. These two parts dictate the aerodynamic performance of the rest of the car. Which brings us a bit back to the side pods. Now this is where Mercedes has made huge changes in terms of design. Now this is what the silver arrows had for most of this season, and here you can have a good look at the narrow side pods, or as it is called the zero side pods concept. It is very distinctive, with the letterbox shaped vertical radiator inlet. Moving backwards, you can clearly see that they're not much of a side pods here, with a lot of the floor being exposed. This was a concept that Mercedes believed was game-changing, and believed that this concept had a higher development ceiling and a lot of untapped potential. But after some disappointing races in the 2023 season, the team has abandoned its unique concept and has moved towards a much more traditional side pods design. Even though many call this as a complete redesign, there are some bits and pieces which the team has brought from its old concept, such as the top side impact structure winglet and the bulge down on for the lower side impact structure. But you can see the side pod is much wider than the team's previous iterations. It runs all the way back, close to the coke bottle area. Also due to the introduction of a conventional side pod style, less floor has been exposed as you can see here. Taking a look from the front, you can see this radiator inlet here, with a much more conventional opening, under the side impact structure. This is a huge change, not just aerodynamically, but this also related to the car's cooling system, as the team would have made massive changes under the bodywork to accommodate this new side pod's design. Take a look at how the underside of the side impact structure winglet is redesigned to channel that airflow into the radiator inlet. Also take a look at this bit, hanging down the winglet. This is also a carried over pieces from the previous Mercedes design. But, this piece is now a bit more detailed. And as for the entire winglet, it has been reprofiled. From what I can see, this winglet is serving more of an aerodynamic purpose than just being present due to a design alteration. This winglet is a downwashing component and helps push the tire wake from the front tires out of the clean airflow flowing towards the diffuser. This helps in better airflow towards the rear and improves the loads along the floor edge as well. Before we move on to talk about the side pods, I just wanted to point out at this interesting detail over here. The top part highlighted by yellow seems to be a downwashing component, but the detail circled by red. Are Mercedes trying to reinvent the bars board here? Of course it will have a big impact on the airflow around the side pods, and also will improve the local load around the floor fence. But that is an interesting bit of detail, and for sure other teams will take a good note of that. Let's now talk side pods. Let's start from the top. I can see many concepts baked into one on these new side pods. Try remembering the side pods of the Ferrari F175. Try recalling that scalloping side pods, which were thought to be a drag-reducing design. 
Well, we clearly can see that design implemented within the new Mercedes side pods here. Take a look at the cooling louvers highlighted by red, they also resemble the F-175. Looking all around, it seems though Mercedes are trying to follow the direction of Aston Martin and Alpine, not exactly though. Because you can see this water slide being present on the Mercedes design, but it is not deep as what the Alpine or the Aston Martin has got. But, will they go as extreme as Aston Martin? Well, time will tell. But the team has got the opportunity to go to that extreme, considering the amounts of shared components between these two cars. When taking a look from the rear of the car, it is more evident that Mercedes has not exactly copied Aston Martin, as the rear resembles more of the Ferrari design. So it seems to me that Mercedes are exploring various directions with this new upgrade to its bodywork design, trying to keep many different options open for them to develop the car. On an aerodynamics perspective, its new design has the downwashing idea, combined with bringing the airflow around the side pods to the rear of the car. Perfect airflow will result in better load generation. The increased bodywork width increases local downforce and also improves the flow to the rear wing assembly and rear corner. Mercedes did bring a new floor to Monaco, which we do not have visuals of. But to accommodate the new floor, there are changes being made to the floor edges. These are simple changes, to aid in better vortex generation alongside the floor edge, to better seal the underfloor for better downforce generation. But the floor edges seems minimal, and I am expecting it to evolve over time, as the car runs on more traditional circuits. One final detail I would like to point out is at the rear of the car. Not the rear wing, it is this new rear brake duct design the team has introduced. This might be an attempt to improve the load around the rear of the car, to try and improve the performance of the rear of the car. Overall, a huge change of direction for the Brackley-based squad, and it is brave of them to introduce such a big package at a circuit like Monaco, because core to that new package is the front suspension. And what is the part that has taken the most beating around Monte Carlo? That's the front suspension. As we did see the crash Carlos Sainz had during FP2 at Monaco around the swimming pool chicane, damaging his front right suspension. Monaco is not the track where the team would be hoping for a boost in performance, but they will be able to test out the upgrades and test if the so-called new baseline for the team is stable and performing well, both aerodynamically and mechanically. But I am hoping to see more changes to the W14 within the coming races, as some of these parts might be Monaco-specific, considering the nature of the track. So what do you guys think about this direction change taken by Mercedes? What were your first impressions regarding the upgrades brought by Mercedes? Do you think the silver arrows can work their way towards the front with this concept change? Share your thoughts with us in the comments section down below. We'd love to discuss it with you. Also, if you were able to find out any additional detail regarding the upgrades, which we have not covered in this video, do drop those ideas in the comments down below. And on your way down, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get notified of our future uploads to keep yourselves up to date about the 2023 Formula 1 season.